Hello everyone, just waiting for Adrian to join and then we'll get started. Uh, just a brief intro before we begin. Um, oh, here we go. So this month, our SAR Artist Live series is a special Indian market series and it is um, in partnership with Swaya, Native American Art Magazine with additional partnership from Atata Foundation and King Galleries. Hi, Adrian. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, I'm still trying to get set up here. Awesome, well today I'm here with uh, Hema sculptor Adrian Wall. He was the 2009 King Fellow at SAR. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Felicia Garcia. I'm the Curator of Education at the Indian Arts Research Center. And for the audience, please feel free to ask questions throughout our um, interview and I'll be sure, oh, audio, is anyone else having audio issues? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, great. Okay, can, can I, you hear I me? can hear you first. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. Um, I've got a light here. Let Hello. me see. Okay. Sorry if um, some of you could not hear me. Um, just to repeat, I'm here with Hema sculptor Adrian Wall. Um, please feel free to ask any questions throughout the interview and I'll make sure to um, pass them along to Adrian. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining me tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. And you're calling in from your studio, is that correct? That's correct. I'm in San Isidro, New Mexico, just south of Hamas. Okay. Yeah. Great. Is it pretty smoky there, too? Yeah, it's actually cooling off, though. It's been so hot. But yeah, it's smoky. It's kind of weird. It feels, the other day, I was saying it feels like we're on another planet. It was so hot and muggy. Yeah, and... it's bizarre. Um, yeah. I was just driving home, and there was, uh, it was smoky, and there was lightning. So it definitely is a, feels like a weird time. All right, well, let's get started. Um, so this month, we're interviewing artists who are participating in virtual SWAYA. Can you tell us um, what your experience has been like this year? Um, well, it's been interesting. Um, I had a lot of plans to do these live videos. Well, I um, originally agreed to do this interview with you guys a long time ago, and then um, mm -hmm. I was kind of having second thoughts about doing the market, just because there's so much going on and so much not going on, you know what I mean? There's just other things took priority in my life this summer, um, besides making art. And um, right. so I, I kind of backed out and then I remembered we we're going to do this. And I was like, man, you know, I, I'm just going to give it a shot. So I ended mm -hmm. up um, signing back up just a couple of weeks before the market would um, start or yeah, about two weeks before August started. And mm -hmm. so I was kind of late to the game, um, but I had um, an idea to, to finish a bigger piece and I'll show it to you in a second um, and um, to do these kind of blog interviews. But I had so many technical issues trying to upload from here. Um, just it's, it became very tedious and cumbersome. And so I just kind of said, well, we'll see what happens. And so it's been neat. I've had a lot of interest, a lot of um, traffic to my website. Um, and I, yeah, it's been pretty interesting. Got a lot of inquiries for, about my work. I don't think I've really finished anything that I wanted to for the market, but you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of the way it goes right now. Um, yeah. So do you think you'll, oh, sorry. So my approach is kind of a little bit different, you know, before, before it's usually, you have that deadline of Indian market mm -hmm. and it's, um, so I think what I've been more focusing on is kind of building my website up, um, getting, going to start this online sort of hopefully before the end of the, the month, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to actually use their art, art, um, what's it called? Um, I want to say art space. I can't remember the website they're using. Um, I have my own site, so I haven't really been using that with the, um, with um, with capabilities of selling stuff on there so uh -huh. but I still have to upload work to that for that too. Right. So, yeah it's just a crazy crazy journey so my approach is more more about like trying to gear up for the future of selling art online mm -hmm. and understand what that's going to be like um, but still working I got really busy the last couple of weeks so it's it's fun yeah, I was going to ask if you feel like you'll continue to do more um, of these like virtual programs and more online um, presentation of your work in the future as a result of this. Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, I, I, we might not have a choice. No, I don't. Hopefully, right. this won't go on too for too much longer. But um, yeah, I think it's a great way to to connect with people. I've done a couple of these kind of one-on-one um, video things showing people work, 
and I'm talking about projects and things like that. So yeah, definitely kind of continue with that. I'd like to kind of, um, you know, one of the things I threatened to do for market was to do this blog on my website. Mm -hmm. and, um, I created a bunch of videos. I just never like edited them because it became really cumbersome. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's a lot I, want, work. I would like to do something like that that wasn't, you know, um, if there's a simpler way of doing it besides mm -hmm. having to look, you know, edit them and load them up to YouTube and then, then bounce them to my site. Because I was trying to just load them directly, but it wasn't working. So I was like, darn, that was my um, my quick way of doing things. But or making maybe just making little clips. Um, mm -hmm. People are really into these so stories on social media, and it's kind of neat to watch people, the way they approach it. Um, and I'd kind of like to maybe do something like that with my work. Yeah, definitely. It's been really fun to do these live conversations, um, especially with our artists who um you know our past artist fellows so we might not have a chance to catch up with them very often and so it's cool to get to show people um an inside look at their studios and what they've been up to so this has been really fun for us nice yeah it's been good 10 11 years since i've been up since i was a, a resident at S sar right yeah good times i love that place <laughs> um do you appreciate that Swaya is an entire month long this year and you can kind of release things on a rolling deadline versus having to just do everything by that one weekend? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, it's kind of interesting because I, I still don't know how to approach it. My sister did it just like a regular Indian market. She worked her right. butt off and got everything together and had a fantastic show. And I was like, wow, I should have done that. But <laughs> my head wasn't there. I was just like, well, what's this going to be like? And, right. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. I mean, I, I like all these little events like this are great. Um, uh, and, you know, I'm just kind of keeping working. I've, I've got a couple of things um, that I'm kind of working towards. And mm -hmm. it doesn't, for me, I don't feel that pressure. Like I need to have things done right now. And that, that feels good. I'm able to take little side jobs here or there, you know, just little like projects, people orders or something like that. Um, and uh, even big orders. I've got a, I recently just got a really big order I've been kind of plugging away at. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's kind of neat because usually during Indian market, it's just like, nope, I'm sorry. I can't show you anything or I, can't, I don't right. have any time to work on anything else. And, and um, yeah, so, and also I think the whole way this COVID thing worked out, um, you know, my focus again has not really been on making art until just, just recently, maybe a month now. Mm -hmm. um, when it first started, I was very, felt very creative and very like, um, I don't even know how, how what to how to explain it, but I, was, I felt very creative. I was creating a lot of work. I right. was um, staying at staying at home a lot, writing a lot of music and those kind of things. And um, but as things kind of went on, there wasn't a lot going on, and my focus kind of shifted to my family and um, projects around the house and gardening and those kind of things. And when I would come down to the studio, I just wouldn't feel very like inspired to make anything. Um, and that went on for several months. So mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting how this whole thing is kind of. Um, unfurled. Right. Have you um, been inspired to like try out any new mediums or try anything? Yeah. New well, yeah, I have. I'm, I've um, actually I spent the very first part of this and and um, most of the, most of the COVID time kind of developing a, um, a building a casting kind of studio here. I want to do small metal metal casting. Basically, taking my sculptures and shrinking them down and doing them in silver uh -huh. and other materials. So. Um, that's kind of what I what I spent a lot of time doing is kind of building that up, just turning my shop into a small casting studio. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I've been experimenting with that quite a bit. A um, little bit of a learning curve, but it's been great. I've had some um, awesome coaches and mentors to help me out. That's awesome. Yeah, and if you wouldn't mind, um, I'd love. To, I'm sure we would all love to get a little tour of your workspace and see what you're working on. Sure. Well, let's, let's start outside because that's kind of um, where I do a lot of stuff. Let me turn this around. So it kind of out here is where I do all the crazy, messy work. This is um, wow. This is just a shop. This is actually what I've been working on quite a bit, oh, especially recently, trying to get her finished. Um, there's a little call for art, so um, I've been putting quite a few hours into her. Oh, I have to really back up. Her. She's pretty big, but it's just a lady with her foot sticking out. Piece of limestone, Kansas limestone, really hard limestone. Um, starting to get the shape down, so I'm about ready to start um, refining it a little more. Um, but yeah, this has kind of been taking quite a bit of time and I've got a lot of stuff I've roughed out. I'm doing this whole series of marble ladies, um, that oh, I wanted to, to finish. I, I just, I started them and haven't quite finished them. Got all these little 
projects I would have, you know, normally have done for new market, those really sellable things that people can take with them. But mm -hmm. like I said, I just kind of um, could kind of switch gears a little bit and kind of slow down a little bit and been working on here. And then I've got this piece in the back. I just started roughing the other day and finished. It's pretty substantial too, as far as size. But yeah, this is kind of the stone carving area. I'm getting ready to actually move this whole thing over a little bit because I'm doing a lot more um, jewelry work. Mm -hmm. So it's um, a little easier to keep clean if there's not any white right. dust flying around in there. Um, so do you so, bounce back and forth between different projects? Um, all the time, all mm -hmm. the time. Um, this is kind of just the, the regular jewelry setup. I do a lot of, you know, finishing and stuff work, working here. Or, you know, it's, I spend a lot of time at this desk. Um, and then, of course, this is a little casting unit. I was able to score this um, recently. So um, I, I use it as my um, solder station as well. Um, but if you open this up, it has a little small centrifugal caster. And I've got a little bit bigger one, but I still need to tweak it a bit. Let's see. So it works pretty nice. Little small metals casting. It was an old dental unit I picked up. Oh, wow. I used to make gold teeth for people. Oh, that's so and interesting. I retired, so I was like, oh, I'll take that. That's pretty neat. Um, and then over here, just kind of been practicing, um, you know, stone setting and stuff like that. That's one of the things I'm kind of working on this semester. Here's one of those pieces, art semester, um, this summer. <laughs> See, look at my camera. Here's one of those little castings oh, wow. I was talking about I'm working on. That's so beautiful. this is carbon wax, and then um, I cast it in that little caster. So it's a one of a kind, and I'm still trying to figure out what to do with the back. I tried to inlay some things to it for it, but it didn't quite work out. But you know, just taking what I do on a larger scale and then making smaller is kind of the idea. Mm -hmm. um, and then over here, I've got some glass kilns. I just prepped this for some to melt some glass. I recently got an order for a mega load of these little feathers, these glass feathers I make. Oh wow! Um, so um, been just trying to stay consistent and and. Um, you know, get those done. So that's taking a lot of time as well. Um, and then, you know, just work areas. I, I do, like, I, I don't see those glass bracelets I do, but I end up carving <laughs> a lot of glass and, you know, polishing. This is kind of my polishing station and cutting station. Um, it takes a lot of, uh, quite a bit of time just using diamonds and things to, to polish stone. Um, kind of some metal forming stuff. This is a mess, but, and then, um, yeah, and it's kind of a wax carving station too. I do a lot of wax. And then I turned my bathroom into a, the lapidary area um, just because in the wintertime, it's a lot easier to heat that little room than heat this big old right. place because I like it nice and warm when I'm working in the um, mm -hmm. water. Um, but that's basically it. Um, of course, I, it's the messy part. Of course, I've got all my glass um, powders kind of stacked up here. And then all my stone sculpture tools are just piled there, you know. And then, of course, the kitchen. Got to have a kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a cool spot, um, and then just the rest of the chaos. The, I'm sure a lot of artists have projects they're working on, and it's crazy. It's crazy here, but it's great. Yeah. Wow, I'm like amazed that you can ha work on in so many different mediums in that one space. That's really cool. Yeah, it's been a trick, and I've always been like that, um, trying to get things, building um, little uh, spaces for for making stuff. Uh, they all kind of cross pollinate each other, but they also mm -hmm. can be very distracting when you're trying to get something done. Right. Um, I didn't work yesterday. I took yesterday off. I went and hauled wood and um, hung out with my brother when we fished a little bit. But the day before that, I had a friend of mine come over and um, turn this around. Yeah, I had a friend of mine come over and we um, we made a bracelet and that was pretty cool. It took all day, but um, but I trashed this place just kind of running around this little jewelry area because we uh -huh. um, did a tufa cast. And um, then I set a stone for him. It came out really nice, but it was a lot of work. Um, do you do a lot of collaborations? Um, not so much. You know, I'm, I'm pretty far from everybody. Right. Um, so, like, the, really the only collaborations I do are, like, music kind of stuff mostly these <laughs> days. I'd like to work with other people, um, especially with glass. Um, there's a lot of – I don't know as much as I'd like to know about glass. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I'd like to learn, definitely learn more. But, yeah. I had an audience question here. Um, sure. He says she'd like to hear more about the relationship between inspiration and brain capacity. Where does your inspiration <laughs> come from these days? <laughs> wow, that's a good question. You know, um, that's a really good question. I mean, I think I've been struggling with that for quite a quite a while. Um, 
I think when, when I was early in my career, inspiration came really easy because I had so many um, um, pieces of work, artists that I could, could um, use as resources. Or, and um, so I, I worked a lot, um, basically mimicking people and styles and, you know, but as, I, as I've grown older and more mature as an artist, I kind of wonder like, you know, why am I making this and, you know, where will this end up and what am I saying with this piece? And so, um, yeah, inspiration is kind of fleeting. Um, I think the most, the most inspirational thing really is working, just like mm -hmm. just starting on something. Right. And then um, it be, and you're, it, it's kind of self-inspiring. Um, occasionally I'll have like, a, oh, wow, I want to try that. Um, that bracelet I made a couple of days ago was like really great for me because it was um, something I'd wanted to do. I had an idea to do, but I needed to do something really quickly because we had to do it that day. Right. It came out so nice that I'm like, well, I think I really need to pursue more of these pieces. So, you know, the work actually inspires itself. So, right. um, was there a two question? Was that a two question thing about <laughs> something about brain capacity? But yeah, no, I think that was a, you answered it. That was a great answer. Okay. Um, we have another question. Um, they would like to know, where do you get the glass that you work with? Well, I, I do a lot of kiln forming. So um, I'll show you. So what I do is like a lot of sheet work and, and because they, they call this warm glass or use a kiln and you melt it in there. It's not like you have a furnace and you're blowing glass to make uh, round forms or sculpted forms. Um, so what I do is I, I buy sheet glass um, mm -hmm. and it comes in all different thicknesses, sizes and colors. Okay. Um, and then I cut it up, but I use a glass that comes from a company called Bullseye Glass. Um, they have a, a, a resource center in, um, um, in Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I buy big sheets like this and, and bigger. Like I just put in an order for a bunch of sheets. And so I have different sizes of kilns, like um, this kiln right here I use for um, making jewelry. It's just got a small shelf in there. And uh, I can do small stuff in there. And then I've got this one down here that's a little bit bigger. That I can do little castings in or, or things like that. And, but yeah, but the glass comes out of Santa Fe. And it comes out in all kinds of colors. So Okay. Yeah, I think I bought some earrings from you that I uh, gave my grandma for Christmas last year. She loved That's them. That's right. Yeah, I remember that. Oh. Let's see. All right. And so you mentioned that you're also a musician. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, I, um, I, that's kind of my, been my first love. I, okay. As a teenager, I played music and I just never stopped. I've been playing in bands my whole life. I have a band now called Interstate, um, a re reggae band. Uh -huh. uh, Kind of kind of interesting now because um we're not playing that much you know we we did a thing recently with the census and then um, before that we made our own little homemade video to, to put out and but um yeah it's been 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 a challenge to kind of connect with those guys we've all like right. like anything we've all kind of drifted doing our own things you know we always go to the past of least least resistance right so mm -hmm. you know um i and for me that's family and um so I think we're all kind of in that mode right now. Um, we have written a few new tunes we're kind of working on, but it's been a challenge to kind of get everybody together to, to right. rehearse and, and create. Do you ever do Zoom rehearsals or virtual meetups? You know, I haven't tried that, but I'm kind of worried about the, the lag, the latency issue. Yeah, I'm right. Sure work. Because I've heard a couple of Zoom concerts, I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound like their time is like right, right there. But, but it could work for songwriting and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but you know we have gotten together a couple of times, and sometimes this, this studio turns into a little rehearsal space. Um, a couple of times this summer we played outside just because we we're trying to be, um, you know, conscious of the social distancing right. and things like that. So, but that was a lot of work to set everything up outside and be done before the neighbors got pissed off. Right. <laughs> and did you mention that you did a project with the census? We did. Um, we played a concert. They had um, the New Mexico census. The Mexico Native Census Coalition um, uh -huh. had a had a couple of Facebook programs, <clears throat> and so they were trying to get people to to fill out their census forms. Okay. Of course, and so uh, one of those programs we um, played a concert for them. That's very cool. That was a lot of fun. We booked the launch pad and had a, ca a lighting guy, and they had a camera crew. It was fun. That's awesome. And you mentioned that you might be interested in sharing a song with us. Sure, I could play a song. Let's see. Um, I think really think that'll be a first. I didn't really find one out, but I got a guitar. <laughs> Every studio has got to have a guitar, right? Let's see. 
uh, let's let's do this. You want? Is there any requests? <laughs> Ooh, any requests out there for our first SAR Artist Live concert? <laughs> Maybe not us. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear the guitar? Yes. That's kind of weird. I have my air conditioner on, so. Let's see, what to play, what to play. Um, no requests, so. I'll try this. Um, my buddy, Ed Kabodi, he's a good friend of mine. He did a little concert last night, and he was, um, he was like all about his uh, free bird. Yes. <laughs> it was all about his uh, influences. And I was like, man, that's a cool, cool theme for a virtual concert. So that we just cool. went to the flowers and played all these songs. Um, so that got me thinking, like, what are all my influence? And I have a ton of them. But one of the things that kind of brings me back to being a kid is um, the Eagles. Mm -hmm. So I'll try this tune. I'll kind of murder it because it's a hard song. But <laughs> see. Desperado, why don't you come to your senses? down from your fences and open the game it may be raining but there's a rainbow above you you better let somebody love you before it's too late see i forgot the words <laughs> i'll have to try something else now Played an original song. It's hard to forget original words. This is a song called Clouds, skipped on the road a long time ago. Um, There's a crosswind, baby, blowing right for me. That may Someday you will see that the soul shines brighter when the clouds roll away and the sun beams fall on my face. Winds may change directions, but the story is the same. What climbing this mountain in our own way, but the love shines brighter when the trails are same. Clouds below, there are no wild names. There are no wild names, and the shadows fall away. There are no wild names in the light of a brand new day. There are no wild names. And the sun restores my faith. No wild name. On top of this mountain, as far as I can see. That crosswind is blowing straight into you and me, but the soul shines brighter when the clouds roll away and the sun beams fall on my face. Let the sun. Cool. Awesome. Wow. I wish that you could hear all of 
the applause that our viewers would be giving you, but oh, thanks. we've got <laughs> lots of thumbs up and fire and heart emojis here. So that was awesome. Thank Great. you. Thank you so much. I can't believe I forgot the words of that song, though. That's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard to the original pressure. music, though, I think. <laughs> the hardest thing about having a guitar in the shop is keeping my extremes clean. I cannot okay, I bet. Healthy, so. Um, so what's the best way to listen to your music? Um, are you all on Spotify or YouTube? Yeah, well, I, I am. I have a, I wrote a song at the beginning of COVID that was, I should have played that. It's called the Lockdown Reservation Quarantine Blues. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was just, a, it's just a campy blues song I wrote, just kind of um, talk about some of the, the humorous things that were going on. I was trying to lift people's spirits up a little bit. So, uh -huh. but that's on um, iTunes and Spotify. It's all over the place. Okay. But also, um, in a state, the band I N N A S T A um, is on the two. Hold on. Oh no! I lost it. I had a, I had a little sticker that I was going to advertise in the state. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all on Spotify and iTunes and all that stuff. So, um, it's out there. And then awesome. our YouTube channel, there's a lot of stuff on there and Facebook. We're, we used to be pretty active. I think the last few months, again, we haven't really done a whole lot. But, um, right. You know, when this kind of lets up, we'll get back to it. But, you know, to be honest, that's been pretty good for us because um, the six years before that, we worked really hard. I mean, the year before, we were just on the road constantly and playing mm -hmm. all, all over the place. So it's been nice to take a break and, you know, get those creative energies um, rejuvenated. So. Yeah, that's how do you balance your music with your um, visual art practice? That seems like you just have so much going on. Yeah, it's it's hard um, for sure. Um, the guys are very understanding about that kind of stuff, and um, you know, aside from the band, there's a lot of places I, I'll show work and also get to play, so that really fulfills that part of mm -hmm. me. I mean, I, for me, it's kind of kind of interesting. I I feel like I need to play music. I just love it so much, and. Um, so yeah, it's it's really a challenge, um, and sometimes business can be really good with the music stuff. I also play a lot of native flute music, mm -hmm. and um, you know tying those things together really um, works well sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a creative force, um, and uh, yeah, maybe I'm just like have a short attention span or something because I am bouncing around not only within the visual arts but but with the music and kind of right. Um, do you ever create any of the cover art for your band or for your solo music? Yeah, I've done a lot of that. You know, um, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really release a lot of me, my personal music. Right. Uh, but I've, but I've made a, made a lot of that, especially digitally. Um, uh -huh. I like computers a lot, so. Okay. Um, Photoshop and Illustrator, my friend. Oh, we have a request. Um, what was the title of the song that you just sang? Oh, that was Clouds. Oh, you did, you did say that. Awesome. Cool. Um, so do you have any like exhibitions or um, gallery shows coming up where people might be able to see some of your art? Well, there's there's some work in Santa Fe right now at the <laughs> Fahrenheit show that's going on at La oh. Um Not a lot of pieces. I didn't take anything new. Um, and then there's a big glass show coming up um, with the uh, Mayak, at the Mayak. And oh, okay. it was slated to open in August, this August, but of course, um, with COVID, it keeps getting delayed and delayed. So um, I thought they're saying March, but it sounds like it's going to get delayed again next year. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll see what happens. But yeah, that's kind of the next big show I'll be a part of. That's exciting. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Like totally is. I can, yeah. There's so many great, ama amazing native glass artists that will be part of this. And I'm just honored to be, to be put in there excited yeah um alicia is she actually um alicia our director she put together a glass a virtual glass exhibition on our website and alicia cool. maybe you can help me out here i don't think it's live yet but um we'll be sure to post about it on social media as soon as it is live but yeah we've had quite a few really wonderful glass artists come through IRC over the years. And so it's really fun to see it all together. And um, so I'll keep you all posted. If it's not live yet, keep an eye on our social media and we'll post the link. Cool. Right. And then I guess we're kind of getting towards the end of our time here. Already? Um, I know, it goes by <laughs> so fast. Um, but 
what is the best way for folks to stay up to date on what you're working on and your work? Is it social media, your website? Well, definitely social media. Social media is easy and that's kind of my go-to because it's just like I can post stuff on Instagram. I have two Instagram pages. Um, one is um, Adrian Wall. Oh, it's actually K-I-L-T-I-C-A, Kiltica uh -huh. is, a, is my, um, oh no, what's happened? Oh, okay, so that's my personal, but I've, um, if you go look, Adrian Wall Art. Um, okay. I've got a, a website, or what's my Instagram. And then same with Facebook, it's the same there too. And I've got adrianwall.com. Um, okay, perfect. Um, and then I'll leave just a minute for any last audience questions. And then I can I'll... show you what work I have too. Like oh, awesome. Things. Yeah, I would love that. Just some stuff that's kind of laying around. Not laying around, but I just had them here at the shop. Actually, they were in storage. So um, this is a piece of granite. You can't really see it, but I really like carving this hard stone. This comes from over here in Hamas, up at the Gilman Tunnels. I've been taking that ride up there and all that stone that's up there. That's, that's carved cute. from that. Here's one of the glass pieces I was making. I mean, I made a bunch of these, but mm -hmm. and this one just hasn't found a home. I've had it for a while. But I'm kind of welding up these bases and they're kind of kachino motifs. Here's a little bronze, um, little bronze bear made recently. This is all small, we're small scale stuff. And then, of course, have some feathers. It's, they look like when they're finished and then a little stone piece carved and then um it's a piece of glass did we sell oh, yeah. yeah i love that you make like glass. a range of stuff in different sizes so that like you know i bought those earrings for my grandma but then you have these other like really huge works and so there's right. just a big range that's like very accessible to everyone yeah i try to keep it keep it um you know, especially at the markets, you gotta have stuff that you can carry. Here's another piece I'm mm -hmm. kind of working on. Um, it was finished at one point, but I'm trying to reinvent it. Oh wow! Um, it's big glass. Basics cool with the light. So it's so, glass, and then what is the? It's, like it's a glass, stone, stone and steel. So it's a okay. mixture of materials. I've been trying to. I've been working to to marry these materials, and it's it's very. I find it very difficult. I mean, um, like I'm still working on this. I need to find some more. Like, get some more moves going on it and I'm mm -hmm. uh, gonna change it up quite a bit actually now that I kind of got the rough idea but um yeah the materials are, are so different it's, I find it very hard to to um, to make it work yeah that's beautiful uh, though the combination is really amazing thanks thanks let's go back over here it's more light yeah so yeah so in the future I'm just gonna keep plugging away like I said, I don't know what's what's going to happen with the markets and things like that. So, right. But I don't want to rely on that either. Just kind of want to make stuff that's interesting. Right. Yeah, we'll definitely um, be posting about the Mayak show when it opens. So for our audience, we'll be sure to keep you all up to date. And then, of course, our online glass exhibition. Um, it looks like we don't have any more questions from the audience. Um, but I just wanted to let everyone know that next Monday, Alicia Poon will be having a conversation with Navajo weaver Marlo Katoni. So definitely tune in for that same time uh, next Monday. All right. And I think that's it. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thanks for having me. Too. And like I said, this will be up on our YouTube. So um, feel free to share later and you can rewatch over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll share it for sure. All right, great. Well, have a good night. Good night. Bye. All right, thanks. Bye.